what has been your experience of of being down here in Santa Cruz, downtown Santa Cruz? You moved a year ago. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so you moved a year ago. How is that? You know that transfer from four blocks or three blocks away. Yeah. <laughs> like a block. It was like a block. Yeah, we were right across the clock tower, and now we moved right next to Zockley, so it was <laughs> it wasn't too many feet away. Uh, it's good, you know. It's a little bit of a different dynamic. Um, I, it's nice to feel like a lot of people didn't know we existed because a lot of people don't cross over the road. Uh, but it's been nice because we get to kind of meet new people. Um, it's a little more lively. Um, and yeah, I don't know. While still like keeping the same people that we knew from before since we didn't move too far at all. But you were able to even like, and this is bigger. Slightly. Right? It is slightly. It's, like, it's literally <laughs> only three, like maybe three feet on each side bigger. But you were almost able to add more. It just seems like you have more plants than you've ever had before. We do. We have a problem. We always joke around and say that for every one plant that kind of leaves out here, we feel the need to like automatically fill up the spot. Um, but yeah, it's we've got higher ceilings here, which is really cool. We've got really cool like preserved moss going around, feeling like the plants are taking over the rest of downtown. So we've been able to really do a lot with the space, and we've actually been working on shifting some stuff around and kind of give it a more dynamic so you feel like you've really like dug yourself into the jungle can you tell us about just like the very like let's talk about the origins like oh, how did this whole plant obsession because i feel like it was a passion that became a business yeah definitely um oh god <laughs> since i was a little girl it was my dream to open up either a plant or a flower shop i just knew that i loved nature and I wanted to eventually it was always a retirement dream just kind of have a place to bask in the community and share for our love of you know nature as a general and as I just got older I slowly started to realize that you know it's going to be more the plant direction as much as I love flowers it's just something more spoke to me about um, plants themselves and um, it just started evolving studied forestry and eventually little by little started realizing that the further I got into my career uh, with vegetation management that as much as I was liking the positions I was in, as much as I was happy there was something missing and realized it's like, oh, why am I going to wait to do the one thing I want to do in life for when I retire? If, if I can do it now and share with everyone. Um, so that kind of clay helped me out a ton. Well, that's what I was How did you rope clay involved? Oh, in gosh. So really we, met in, me we, in met, we met in college and we both, we actually out in Florida and we both knew it's like, we want to come out. Uh, to California, so waited till I graduated. A um, lot cheaper to do in state tuition. Um, to move out here, found a job out here, and um, Clay always knew that I liked plants and that this was always kind of you know a dream out into the future. And once we moved here, said no a lot. And said no a lot. Said, and then I said, if we find the right space. Yeah, if we find the right space, then we, we can do it. We can do it, and we did. We got really lucky with our other spot. You know, it let us kind of start smaller space and. We got really nice. Um, we subleased it for Mobile Kangaroo, which is actually now on the other side. Um, they were super nice to let us do that and just kind of, you know, it was hard starting out because um, as a new time like business owner and being a younger woman, you get a lot of people that. Got some rude no's. I've got a lot of rude no's and a lot of people <laughs> assuming that I didn't have a business plan, assuming that I didn't have the knowledge or the, the experience and, you know, as much as I can pull up all my. All, all my credits, I can pull up all my all my information. Um, I had business plans and I've had landlords and managers say like, oh, well, you'd need to submit this, you'd need to submit that. Very like rude and standoffish. It was people. pretty rude. It was pretty <laughs> it rough. Was, like, pretty bad. But eventually we had, we, we had uh, Joseph from Oba Kangaroo. He, he really like saw it, he gave me the opportunity. He didn't assume anything. He was like, okay, yeah, send me your stuff. And I was like, perfect, I have it. Emailed him right away and kind of was able to start off that way. Um, but yeah, a lot of things slowly just came together until the moment just kind of, how Clay out. said, it just worked out and it fell into place. And yeah, ever since then we've been going. Now it's been two years. I know. And it's crazy. <laughs> two years goes by. Like it, in many ways it could be, feel like very long, but also very short in some way. Yeah. yeah. Pretty quick. But like, it's a lot of work. I mean, this is not a 40 hour a week, <laughs> nine to five job. Yeah. I mean, is it? Yeah. Do you feel that way? Do you feel like it is a oh, lot of work, gosh. but it's also work that you enjoy, but it's yeah. still there's a grind. So it. yeah, you know, it it's so many hours a week. It's so much work, and I 
wouldn't trade it for the world. But just as an example, today's we're filming on a Monday. We're closed <laughs> on Mondays. It's our one day off in the whole week. We work I'm all this sorry. Oh, no, it's it's okay. No, no, it's we love to. It actually worked out because we're, we're we're planning on working we're today anyway like for our anniversary. So we're we're working all the days this week and then the weekend and it, no, it's gonna be awesome. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 a lot of work and dedication, and you know, um, for anyone wanting to like do or pursue a passion, you gotta. It comes to the point that you gotta realize if if you yourself want to do that transition from passion and from hobby to an actual like full work, because it does eat like every aspect of your life, everything we do. You end up working, you know. We've easily had some eighty-hour weeks before. More than that. More than that. Um, even if you're not, you know, in the beginning, we're at, I was in the shop all the time. All the hours we were open, you'd see us here. So even though you might not see us around as much, we're, we're running, you know, we're sourcing plants. We are working with growers. We are talking to makers. We are getting more handmade pottery. There's like so many like moving parts in it. It's, it's a lot of work, but dang, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it. I mean, hopefully we'll slowly be able to work more like normal work weeks. We're like slowly getting there, but, um, yeah, I, would, I wouldn't change it, but that's the biggest kicker, you know, we sometimes get people being like, oh, you know, I, I see how you guys kind of turned your passion into, in, into your job, like, any advice, and that's the biggest thing is, is making sure that, that, that you know all the little aspects and you're taking it not just for the wonderful view that it sounds like, but with all the things that make it a little less pleasant, and if you're still, if you're still good with that and you're willing to sacrifice all of that, then then it's going to make you so happy. But yeah. So understand what you're getting into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you mentioned about there was a lot of people that were almost rude. It's like anytime you open a business, you start a business, you have these like naysayers or something like that. But oh. on the opposite side, like Santa Cruz is such a great community. Like, can you tell us a little bit about the support that you got from the community, friends, anywhere, like, and why that was so important? Oh, God, yeah. It... <laughs> Without our community, we would not be here. And I know everyone, you know, says that, but it, it could be, like, it couldn't be beyond, like, the truth. It's just, it's huge. Um, from day one, you know, we were pretty new, and from Instagram, slowly, like, word started spreading, and we are talking about, like, downtown Santa Cruz, the association, you guys event Santa Cruz, like, so many different business owners that we've met um, throughout here, throughout downtown, and throughout, you know, business owners we met out in Capitola and Soquel, so... I could start naming so many people and just the list wouldn't stop of just really genuinely nice people that just enjoy plants and are part of the community, you know, it, it's kind of been wild and now two years later, even like other people that didn't know we were here um, and, you know, talking about like UCSC, younger students or like um, people that have been in Santa Cruz for a long time, it's just like, I don't know, it's definitely get more support. Yeah, yeah, the, the more naysayers. we go. We don't, we don't really we, worry about them. Yeah, we do. It was just in the, you know, it was mainly more, just mainly in the beginning. The and trying I to sign totally a lease. Get it. The <laughs> lease, what it was. The lease <laughs> process was the only really part that we that kind of crazy. had to really deal with that. Aside from that, it's been just really wonderful. Really positive people. Santa Cruz is <laughs> such a good community. And that's why, you know, it was always a dream. And when was, once we really, like, started becoming more part of the Santa Cruz community, it's, we were like, you know, there's nowhere else we'd rather open up leaf and mine and it's just it's yeah, leaf and mine wouldn't be leaf and vine if, if it were some other part in the country like i feel like being part of santa cruz and kind of the bay area is what is what makes it what it is and with the community we have so. and, and it's also just the i mean your customers you have regular customers now yeah. our customers are the best <laughs> we're so biased but they're like some of the nicest people you've ever met or like enthusiastic people that are just you know, I feel like we're all kind of plant nerds, so whenever we come here, we're all kind of like gushing about some things, whether you want it more for like, um, like appearances and like in terms of design, or you want it more as like a hobby plants, but we always talk about it. We're like, dang, we don't know what we did to be so lucky. And like our day to day, you know, we talk about it with, with everyone, like in the team with uh, Carissa, Bria and Ellie, we're like, dang, like our customers rock. We're like, they make the day so much easier just to kind of come and like, feel a little less like a job when you're just kind of, your job is to like get excited and talk to plants people. about other people <laughs> who also like plants. Like it's the best. Well, well let's talk about that. <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm totally pretty on the spot here. Yeah. Nerding out on plants. Oh God. What is something that, that right now you are like nerding out with that's like exciting to you about a nerding certain plant 
or oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah, sorry, you already, I was like, Clay, get this plant. So we have a plant, it's called a, well, it's called a Hoya compacta or Hoya hinder rope. Um, they're really cool, they're epiphytes, they normally would grow up on trees. You treat them kind of like a succulent. They are awesome and really cool to care for. So anyway, uh, these Hoyas, they have a bloom and it's called a porcelain wax flower. They only bloom when they're a more mature specimen. And we've got a couple 8 inch Hoya compactas that are currently blooming in spot. Um, they're kind of like little pom-poms. You can kind of see it's like a pink pom-pom. All the, um, the colors depend on what type of Hoya it is, as well as the blooms themselves will differ a little, but they'll always be kind of this um, kind of cheerleader pom-pom shape. And this one is super cool. It actually smells like a Tootsie Roll or chocolate. Um, when it first blooms, uh, the scent is the strongest. And yeah, it's got a couple blooms. These are yet to open. These are open already. And it's just cool because it takes it takes a minute for them. They, they usually have to be more uh, mature. And this one is a particularly slower grower. So it's just really, it's really cool. So if you're, if you're nearby, we have another basket blooming in the top. And we're having some for show and tell, so you can always kind of catch a whiff, but but yeah, they're really cool, and the blooms come from something that starts forming. It's a peduncle. Anyway, you just kind of get in the nitty gritty, and you kind of freak out a little, but plants are really cool, and we'll have a lot of these kind of plants. The reason we're so excited about the rare plant release is because we're going to get a lot of like plants that just don't look like they'd be your normal day-to-day -day plants. I'm talking about like velvety, you'll see a lot of textures, a lot of like really striking colors that you wouldn't think normal plants would have. And we're getting a bunch of Ancom and Hoyas as well. But yeah, that's one that, I don't know, I just think it's the coolest, a plant that smells like, the bloom smells like chocolate. And I don't know, it's really cool the colors that nature can do that. So, you know, you like, you know, when I asked you the question, you went straight to that plant because that's something you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. But when somebody comes into your shop, doesn't have a plant in their house at all, but says like, I need to start bringing plants, man. Like, how do you move them or direct them or do you consult with them? Like, how does that work to get them to the right plant? Yeah, so, I mean, you know. You ask them about their light. That's first. the kicker. First, you see the environment that they're kind of trying to put the plant in. Most of the time when people haven't had success with a plant, it's because they don't A, have the environment for it or B, just weren't, um, just didn't have the tools how to properly care for it or the information. Um, so sometimes it's like, it's easy to be rough on yourself and you realize it's, you just need to have the right light, the right airflow usually gets overlooked. A lot of people, people put succulents indoors and you might put in a spot that th there's no airflow at all. So you water, everything sits, might rot a little e easier. Um, you're talking about, um, yeah, Well, a lot of times, so if I, were to, if I were to guide someone, I would ask them their light and then I would ask them if they're like looking for like a hanging plant or just like a tall plant, different sizes, things like that. Um, a lot of times if they have good light, they can pretty much do almost wow. anything in here. And I'll show them some things, but then we'll go through it and just tell them like, hey, you know what, find, find what you like um, and then just show it to us and we'll tell you how to care for it. And a lot of time that works really easily because what ends up happening is there's we have a lot. Like, there's, <laughs> hundreds, there's, there's hundreds of plants life, in yeah. here. You know, some people you guide them more when they really like want you to choose it for them. But most people, they like that you could show them a plant and they don't care for that. But then they end up grabbing one and they're like, well, I don't care if this doesn't work. I want to make it work. And mm -hmm. so we help them to the best of ability of explaining how it will work in that spot or where they could put it and how like to make it survive. Um, so me. that's kind of what we'll do a lot of the times. Um, but most of the time people have a spot that the plant they find in here will work for them and we will explain to them how to care for it and if they end up having troubles they can always call us or we'll help them with whatever troubles they end up having um but we don't get many calls with people having trouble so <laughs> so sounds good on you so, guys yeah, thanks, <laughs> thanks. Uh, but yeah it's an equally scientific as it is an artistic process yeah um you know we're here to give you all the tips make sure that scientific wise you you've got it but it's also what's going to catch your eye, what you think is beautiful, what you want to make flourish. Because then, then you're most likely going to do better with the plant because you care about it. Um, so yeah. Okay, so last question. If somebody wants to learn more about you and come down, where, what's the Instagram? What's your location? So um, we're here at 1532 Pacific Ave in downtown Santa Cruz next to Zocalis. Most people know Zocalis and Verve, so that helps pretty much. Um, we are on Instagram as Leaf and Vine Plants. And you can also find us on Facebook if you actually type that same handle at Leaf and Mind Plants. 
um, yeah, we're always here for you guys. We're here. You can give us a call. You can email us. Um, we're more than excited. Great. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you.